Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie. If you are new here and welcome back to another episode of my metalcore-ish music news. So I'm going to be talking about the last two weeks of the month of August and some news, some new songs, all of that good stuff. So if you guys want to hear about some metalcore music news, then just keep on watching. So first things first, I'm gonna dive right into some news that I unfortunately was kind of forced into missing last, in my last video. I had filmed that video on a Thursday because I had to film it on a Thursday and two new albums were coming out the following day, unfortunately. So I had no space to talk about them whatsoever but I just want to talk about them here really quick. So Left to Suffer released their new album, Leap of Death, and I gotta say, really, really fucking good album. I could see where the deathcore community maybe doesn't love it so much. I feel like they definitely went quite a bit more metalcore than deathcore in this album. Definitely have some deathcore songs and deathcore aspects to them, but with that being said, I could see where the deathcore community maybe doesn't 100% love this album front to back, um, but I think it's a really, really fun album. They, they, I love that they experimented and they played and they tried different things because, uh, don't get me wrong, I do love deathcore, but it can kind of get a little bit repetitive. So can metalcore though, to be fair, but deathcore especially can kind of get a little bit repetitive. It's the same chug chug scream kind of situation just over and over and over again. So I love to see bands experiment. I think that it's super fun. They definitely had a couple songs in there that I was like, oh, we're going like a little bit of like a sleep token meets deathcore vibe and it's super fun. It was definitely like a, I would put that one in album of the year territory myself personally. I think that it was a really fun album. I think that my only criticism of them, of, of the whole like album and release for the album is that they shouldn't have led with Lost in the Dark because now maybe it's because it's the song I'm most familiar with, but Lost in the Dark is, in my opinion, the best song on the album, despite it being a traditional deathcore song. I do think that Lost in the Dark is one of the best songs on the album, and I think that they they hit it out of the park really hard with Lost in the Dark, and then every song after that just got a little bit softer and a little bit slower, and like, it definitely showed quite a bit of range, but I feel like they did themselves a little bit of a disservice by putting Lost in the Dark out there first and maybe getting some people's hopes up that it was going to be a purely deathcore album, and then kind of backtracking and going, wait, no, this isn't 100% deathcore, here's the range. Again, I love the range, I think that it's super fun, but that would be my only criticism, and it's not even like that big of a of a criticism by any stretch of the imagination. It's just like a marketing thing, in my opinion. My husband and I actually listened to this album and then the next album that I'm going to talk to uh, one day while we had a bunch of errands to run. And we started with the Left to Suffer album because we prefer Left to Suffer. And in hindsight, I wish that we would have listened to Left to Suffer last out of the two as kind of like a palate cleanser and like, a, okay, we're good now kind of thing. With that being said, Falling in Reverse released the album Popular Monster. Let me put it this way. This is probably going to be the very last time that I'm going to speak on Ronnie and Falling in Reverse, save for like some massive, major, major news that were to happen. I don't foresee myself discussing their new music again. I don't foresee myself discussing albums, tours, anything like that. That album was so fucking bad. Like, I, I don't know how I could put it in a way that would be less blunt, but still get the point across. That album was so fucking bad. So fucking bad. The only good song on it came out almost six years ago. No, almost five years ago. Whatever, same thing. Came out almost five years ago. Popular Monster is the only good song on that album. Some of the other older singles are fine. Zombified is fine. Watch the World Burn, I don't fucking like that song, but like it's fine, at least it's different and has something to it. Whereas the rest of the album to me was just the same song over and over and over again. 
save for Ronald, which is a whole different beast, but like the rest of the album and all my life too, I guess is, you know, different because it's country, but like all of the rest of the non single songs were just the same song over and over again. And there's only so many times that I can listen to a song that has dog whistles in it and continue to, to consume that content. I'm going to be honest, I have stopped consuming Falling in Reverse's content for quite a while now. It's been at least a couple years. I would dabble in, I would listen to the new song because I like listening to new music. I like seeing where the, the industry is going. Um, and I also, I do these videos, so I feel kind of obligated to listen to new music, but in the same breath, there's only so many times that I can hear dog whistles and I can hear, oh my God, I'm canceled. I'm an asshole. I'm the worst person ever, but ha ha ha, I'm the God of music and save the children. You know, like I, I'm, I'm out, I'm done. I'm completely, I'm good. I will say with that being said, did get a pretty good laugh out of the very last song when Ronnie goes on and on about copying, you know, about people copying him. Yet, meanwhile, he's stealing Eminem's flow, Tech 9s style, and the song finishes out with a straight rip off of Ghost Mane. Like, please, miss me with that. And again, I, on the same vein of copying, and if we want to talk about fucking drama here, while I don't under any circumstances think that Motionless and White has ever copied Falling in Reverse, and while I also recognize the fact that Christianity and its imagery is very common at media in general, I'm just saying doing a video with you up on a cross like you're Jesus... Motionless and White did that back in 2009 with Immaculate Misconception. He's pulling the same old, the call is coming from within the house kind of thing, projection ass bullshit. He wants to call people, cancel, you know, call people out for copying him and call people out for this, that, and everything else. Meanwhile, he's the one doing those things. So, kind of makes you side eye the other things that he talks a lot of shit about. I'm going to move on because that album pissed me off a lot. <laughs> and I'm going to be so, so upfront when I say this. This is coming from someone with falling in reverse tattoos, like lyrics tattooed on me. I grew up listening to Dying is Your Latest Fashion. Like that album shaped my music interests and i have never wanted a cover-up tattoo so bad in my fucking life but it is a best friend tattoo so i will not do that unless she does it with me my point being is i'm not coming at this as someone who has always been a hater i used to love them so much and i have never witnessed a band fall off or a man I should say fall off in that in that fashion and he hasn't even falling off he's just fucking getting bigger which is just like so insane to me and just absolutely disgusting that his fan base is growing on the backs of just fucking right-wing transphobia and misogyny let's move on Let's talk about a couple new songs that have come out recently. Again, just some songs that have come out within the last like two weeks of August. I'm not going to talk about every new song because first of all, I don't have the time and second of all, neither do you. But just some songs that stuck out to me and caught my attention. First things first, Andy Sizzik released the single Pain Reliever. I actually really, really like this song. I do really like Andy's voice. Um, my husband doesn't for some strange reason, but I do like Andy's voice. My only thing is like, it, it does get a little bit hard to tell all of his different projects apart. They all sound very similar and it's hard to kind of decipher, okay, what's his solo work versus, you know, monuments and this and that and everything else. But I do really like the song. I think that it's fun. I think that it is a little bit repetitive, but it's a good song. I enjoyed it. Next up. This album is also shaping up to be a banger. Drugs, aka Destroy, Rebuild, Until God Shows, 
released another single titled It Follows. I feel like I have said this about every single one of the new drugs singles, but I am still so caught off guard by the fact that Craig took the song, Craig took the band as into like a more prog, you know, a uh, genty metal core y route. Their first album was definitely not in in that regard whatsoever. So it's very fun to hear his voice with chunky guitars and just like like just it's just fun. I think that the song is super fun. I think that the direction this album is going in is really good. I think that it definitely stands out amongst a crowd of other new songs. I honestly genuinely do. And then last but not least, let's talk about the new Within Destruction song, Demon Child. The song had a little bit of, I don't even, I don't want to call it controversy because it wasn't controversy, but Sumerian had started to tease the song without saying who it was. And I mean, it's got Japanese actors in it and, you know, all of this. And of course, there was a certain group of people who were like, holy fuck, it's new Bad Omens. Oh my God. I'm going to be honest with you. And this isn't me like being cocky or anything, but I heard the song and I was like, there's no way that's Bad Omens. Like even not hearing vocals, even just hearing the production and the guitar tone, I was like, that's not Bad Omens. I've listened to enough Bad Omens to know that that is not Bad Omens. Just saying. And then my husband and I listened to the song and I'm a little bit let down. I do actually really like older Within Destruction. This song just didn't do it for me. Something about the chorus just didn't didn't do it for me. It wasn't it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I had a vision in my mind of what new Within Destruction would sound like and this is not it. And I'm sure that it is it for plenty of people. It's just not it for me and that's totally fine but it just didn't, I don't know. I don't know how to frame it in any way other than it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. But that's going to wrap up my news and my new music. It's been a really, really slow summer, like an extremely slow summer, unfortunately. Hopefully it picks back up in the fall, we'll see. But with that being said, comment down below, tell me any news that you have heard recently or tell me about your favorite new song that has come out recently. I would love to hear all about it. Please subscribe if you have not already. It would mean the world to me. Like this video, ring the bell, do all the things. I hope that you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! La, la.